So this here is the graph for this function that we're in. And we see a bunch of bold lines to indicate loops, loops within loops even. So the way that I approach this is I look for uh, the end of the function and work my way backwards. So there's the return there after, after looking all over this. Found the return. <clears throat> and now I work my way backwards. Okay, so coming out of that node, there's this, and it looks like there's this loop here. So first thing I'm, gonna do, I'm going to do is I'm going to collapse this loop. So control and left click on that, that one, that one, that one, that one, yeah, and those. And then I'll right click on any of these and say group nodes. I'm going to just call this a generic loop one. And rearrange the graph. <clears throat> Let's find where we were. OK, return, work our way backwards. Work our way backwards. Let's see. Work our way backwards to this one, and it looks like. See what I did? Hey, Return. Can, how did you eliminate instruction addresses from your graph? Eliminate instruction address. Are you seeing instruction ad addresses yes. over on your left? Yes. That's under options. General. Oh, you were in the debugger. Yeah, it shows that in the when, when you're you, in debugging mode. When you group them, you also rename them twice. Um, yeah, when I group them, what the? What? Well, my graph just got all weird. Like, <laughs> we broke it. Going into. I thought we were supposed to follow your example. <laughs> wow, Ida Free just like York on me. So this is where we get that whole um, uh, exit, don't save the database, <laughs> go back in. OK, and we're, we're back where the previous save was, which was phase five. Go down to phase six. And here we go. We're back at that again. So I find my return. Have to do the grouping again. There, 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 there. Right click, group nodes, and I'm just going to call this grouping loop one. Like that. Say OK. Move them around. OK. So now do my working back. There's the return group. There's my loop one. Here's the node that was immediately before group one. And there's only one thing coming into this, so I go up to that. And here we go. We have another loop here. Um, so what I'll do is I will start selecting. It looks like these are, um, Ida was nice enough to, to actually highlight that this loop is coming in. So I could follow it down and see that it just looks like these three nodes here. So if I click close, I say, OK, group nodes. I call this loop 2. And collapse them. OK, so I'm continuing to work my way back. From loop to that node. Now, when we get over to this one, we see okay, there's this loop here, but it looks like within this loop, there is another loop down here. Remember, we always want to do the inside loop first. So we're going to go okay. Let me go down to this inside loop here, and I'm going to collapse that one first. Here, here, here. Group. This loop three. And then here we see much nicer now the nodes for this outer loop here. 
and then select them, including the node that contains our loop query. And what I'm using to move is the scroll wheel here. If you try to move by clicking and dragging, you're going to lose the selections. That's just a little good to know there. So what control scroll back? Um, oh yeah, I can, like I can scroll in, I can scroll out um, to zoom in, zoom out, if you want to do that. So what I will do is group. Before. Is that one above the screen also group? Sorry, I guess so. So here, let me collapse this. So what we have here is it's basically everything from where the loop comes in to where the loop, that bold line, everything Not between it. where the bold line is touching. Thank you. Only when it's true. Only, well, on this case, it's when it's false. It depends what that, what, uh, what is looping. So you can, what you can do is you can actually follow the blue, the bold line backwards from its head down and follow that in order to figure out, okay, these are the nodes that needs to be involved. Collapse those now. We're still working our way back to this one. We have this loop. Okay, where's the, the end of this? It's over here, but it looks like there's actually another loop within this loop. Because if I try to follow this up, I hit this other loop head here before I get to the actual loop that I was following. So, okay, now we're gonna work on this inner loop here. I like that. If I work my way back along this, to here, there, there, there. Now those are grouped, we're gonna call this loop. I forget what we are on. Six, five, I'll call it six. There is no five. Three, sir. Three. Okay. So, so this is the loop that we were actually on. The the outer loop here. All that around there, 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 there. So one more loop leads to a loop that I've already closed. And then... If if it leads to a loop that you've already closed, that's fine. That just becomes now part of the outer loop. So now you know that you actually have a the an inner loop and an outer loop. You know, either a you know do while and a do while or a for within a for or a for within a do while or a do while within a for or, yeah. Stuff like that. So we'll group these. Call this loop seven. And now we're at the start of the function. And now if we look down, this is, at least graph-wise, a much nicer looking graph. And we could start working down our ways analysis-wise. And the first loop that we come to, we ungroup it and we just work on analyzing that. Are there any questions on that, on how I did the grouping? How did you do clear away all the loops that have to be made a mistake? Oh, if you, okay, if you made a mistake, say, you know, say loop, group seven, loop seven, I called it loop seven, um, shouldn't be. Oh, you just do it on there. You right click on it and you say ungroup nodes, and there they go. They all ungroup. <laughs> Since we don't group it, sometimes it's really hard to 
lot of expanding of the phrases. Instead of trying to expand it more by all the errors we're creating. Anyone online have any questions about how I did that grouping? You need me to go over it again, I can do that. Okay. So then, yep, what I would do is start following it through and get to my first loop, uncollapse it, and take a look from there what's going on. We last left this where I had collapsed everything down and had started at the end and worked my way backwards. So to start doing the analysis, there we go. To start doing the analysis, well first I'm going to do the magnifying glass thing. The analysis, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the top of the function and work my way down. So one of the first things that I see here is it's the standard preamble, push EBP, move VSP, EBP, sub. So setting up some space on the stack for the uh, local variable, setting up the stack frame. And then after that, the very first thing that I see is this move offset some location of memory to a local variable. Uh, if we take a quick look at that, it's, hmm, I don't know what this is, but I'm seeing very near that, it offset to another location. Where is that? Well, that's right above it. And I see some more stuff with an offset to another location, which is right above that. And all of these things look similar in terms of their size. And at the, the supposed end of, of these structures, I'm seeing this offset to another location in memory that looks similar, where at the end of it, it's got another location of memory that looks similar. I'd say this is a set of structures in a linked list. That's what that looks like to me. So I'm actually, even before I do my loop unrolling, I'm going to start off with just, just setting up a linked list here. Let's say we have a, so at the end of it, we got a, a offset that'll be the, the next pointer. And uh, up to that, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have eight bytes. Um, a just kind of general heuristic that I do is if I see a set of uh, a structure and uh, memory space for it that's divisible by four, I'll just I'll segment those by um, by four so that we have um, several D words instead of referencing them by bytes. If they're actually referenced not as D words but as, as bytes, or maybe one of them is a D word and another one is broken up into byte fields, we're going to see that as we look at the code. It's going to look like, um, if we try to apply that to a location, it's going to look like you know your field but plus some 
number of bytes that's less than four. Uh, so what I'm going to do is define a structure in here, and I will, where's insert on this? Insert. I'm going to call this, I don't know, my items. Um, and we're going to, that's a little cheat sheet here, going to define some data fields. One, two, three, where I know the last one is an offset. Wait, I'm sorry, how did you create all those data fields? Um, I press D. Check. And then to change it to, instead of byte, I just press D a couple more times. So I got the D word. Let me get rid of that. There we go. So it looks like the last one is going to be an offset. So I'm going to say, OK, offset. Yay. Or, yeah. So it thinks of it as an offset. Um, I don't know what these other two are going to be yet. So um, let's just say that they're, show me them as, as numbers in decimal. I don't know if that's going to make sense, but we can change it later on. Okay, now I can go back to my code and I can say, okay, apply this to, oh, where were we? Let me go make sure I go to the start here of that. We're going to say, apply that, Alt, Q, and my items, and okay. And I'm gonna take a look at, okay, where's that next one? I will Alt, Q that. My items, okay. Go to the next one, and I'm just going to do that for all of these until I reach the end of my linked list, which I'll know when I reach a null value instead of a uh, offset. There we go. And this is interesting. So we see one, two, three, four, five, six, kind of following, assuming this is the head of our linked list up the, the chain in the linked list. And then we see this other value here. So I created um, in memory, I set the, the what I thought to be my linked list um, to, to show like that. Just makes it a little easier to read. Still not sure exactly what these field values are going to be, although we think that that's the next field, since it is an offset to the what looks like the next value. All right. So right now that's just as offset start. So I'm going to call this my, I don't know. List head or list pointer. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll rename that later. For right now, I'll call it list head. So, what do we have here? We have int array. Since we had this, this call here, get six numbers that we had already defined because it was used in a function somewhere else. And we had said that the argument, one of the arguments was an int array. I just went ahead and added this comment in and even renamed the local variable for us. So we know that that is a, an int array, integer array of six numbers. And this is how you build on work that you've already done. 